Over a century ago, a sudden mutation began decimating humanity, turning dead bodies into monstrous beings that waged war against the living. This was a disaster the entire world had never seen before. You might say that hell had been incarcerated on Earth. Amidst the nightmare that had engulfed the world, it seemed that humanity had not been abandoned by the gods. Some individuals awakened exceptional talents, and were later known as the Awakened, humanity's last hope against the mutated horrors. By the year 2145, the mutated beasts across the globe underwent a drastic and unexpected transformation, pushing humanity to its final stronghold. Ordinary awakened were butchered and slain. It was no longer a battle but a one-sided massacre, and humanity was losing terribly. Humanity reached its final stronghold, where the final showdown will determine the survival of humanity, facing huge mutated creature which towered buildings. Three awakeners, who were at the peak of power, which was at the third order, faced the monstrosity before them. Tired and exhausted, not wanting to back down, they charged towards the monster. The awakened told his teammates to be vigilant and prepare for any attack. The monster sent its tentacles after them, which was overwhelming for the trio, who were conquered quite easily. One of them called on his teammates to see if he could free himself and boost himself for its head. This monster was of the same rank as them, which was also a third order, and it had the ability to seal psychic power, which the girl told them. This realization dawned on them. They were screwed. Another tentacle approached, looking like Patrick but on crack. Seeing this, they knew that their end had come, and there was nothing they could do but wait for their death. But suddenly, they saw a bright light. <laughs> like a diamond slicing into the monster with monstrous speed, instantly annihilating it. One of the hunters found himself mid-air, free from the demon's clutches, wondering what had happened. They managed to land on their two feet, trying to dodge the monster's falling flesh, turning in the direction of the attack, thinking about who was able to deliver such a devastating blow to a third-order monster, as if it were nothing. Looking ahead, they saw a figure standing before them like a deity, and my name is Yenning, turning to face the trio. As I quickly dealt with another third-order monster, I told them not to be careless, or it would cost their lives and the lives of dozens of innocents. Realizing it was I who had arrived, the trio thanked me for saving them, and promised they wouldn't repeat their mistake. Sensing a unique feeling of energy that was different from the rest of the monsters, I turned to see what entity was emitting such terrifying pressure, when one of the trio with a bow warned me to be careful because one of the monsters, which they had never seen before, had appeared. Looking above to see a creature gazing down on us from the sky, I wondered what type of creature had not been seen before in humanity. Sensing its pressure, I could tell how ominous and different it was from the others. One of the trio, displeased with how the monster was looking down on me, charged, telling the monster that he would smash it from above. Addressing me as Lord Yenning, the two male duo charged toward the unknown entity, ready to attack it. The entity let out a huge grin, widening its eyes and emitting a powerful aura. Its eyes turned to face the duo, who instantly found themselves in a rift, which killed them instantly. The entity closed the rift, after quickly dealing with the two men who seemed like ants to it. The girl, seeing her teammates, who were at the Third Order, being dealt with so easily, was terrified to the core. But still, she gathered herself, and in rage, she accumulated much psychic energy in her hands, ready to pounce on the entity. However, the entity instantly disappeared before her and appeared behind her in the blink of an eye. Not delaying, the entity quickly unleashed its tentacles after her. Turning to see the incoming attack, she was terrified, and, in fear, closed her eyes waiting for impending doom. Hearing the sound of a sword, she gently opened her eyes to see what was happening. I could not just stand there and let an innocent girl die due to the opponent showing its prowess. I knew she could do nothing, and I was suitable to fight the unknown threat. Struggling in a contest of strength with the entity, I inwardly acknowledged that after seeing how it took down two top third tier members, nothing in history confirmed such a monster's existence. Seeing this would be a tough fight, I told the girl to quickly retreat because she would be a hindrance to me. She even knew and wished me luck, beginning to retreat as fast as she could. I was furious with the monster because it wanted to kill such beauty with legendary Nyash, and as a Nyash warrior, I wouldn't let that slide. After the strength contest, pushing each other away, and even blocking its attacks, my sword snapped, and a piece fell off. I was surprised that just blocking it was able to do such damage to my sword. Seeing this, I began to understand that this might be the mutant monster the military had been simulating, and that it may be in existence that exists in theory. This was the mutant that broke all limits, the Fourth Order mutant. Realizing that what I was facing was no longer something that disobeyed all laws and limits, I knew that against such opponents, I must use and unleash my full strength to stand a chance of survival. With creativity, force, and strength, I took off from the ground and instantly appeared before the mutant. I felt a great impact that struck so fast that I had not yet released my power, which split the clouds. I was stunned by the mutant's speed. It had used its hand and landed a serious blow through my chest. After removing its hand from my body, my body went numb, and I no longer had the strength to hold my sword, defeated. I fell to the ground as the entity towered above me. As my consciousness faded away, I asked myself if that was the power of a fourth order mutant. Were humanity's simulations so wrong? The speed of such an entity surpassed the speed of sound, and the laws of physics were just theories to it. Is this my end? Am I going to die here? Even worse, am I going to die a bachelor and a virgin? I failed my ancestors, and failed to protect the world. I don't want it to end like this, I said, faintly. On the other hand, humanity was witnessing things they had never seen before. The leader of the Wuxia Warzone was surprised that I lost despite my god-tier talent, and I was the last hope of the Warzone. 
seeing the entity, he wondered how many minutes they would hold out before they too would die. The old man began to regret that if he had discovered me earlier and given me abundant resources, allowing me to grow, perhaps the nightmare before them could have been prevented. There was no other way now. Realizing their end had come, he saw he had no choice and decided that if Wexia was going down, they would go down fighting. He ordered all the Third Order Awakeners to carry the largest nuclear warhead they had. Even in death, as the Huaxia War Zone, they would die with dignity. Many Third Order Awakeners holding nuclear bombs jumped from the plane into the pit filled with mutants, saluting and saying that, even if they died, humanity would fight till the end. A large nuclear explosion began, annihilating the mutants in the city. Everywhere in the world suffered such a fate, but it seemed Faster had other plans for humanity, especially for me, because I began to open my eyes when I heard the news broadcast, which said that it was the 61st year of the apocalypse, and that Project 337 was expected to land today in the safe zone. Another radio broadcast came in, saying that Safe Zone 67 had been attacked by a sea beast, and that local survivors were told to evacuate. Trying to understand where I was and what was happening, I discovered my head was seriously in pain. Trying to comprehend and recall my defeat by the Fourth Order entity, what do we do? Because he seems to be awake, said one person, while the other answered that I couldn't participate in the test because I was infected by the virus, and that's why I had been unconscious. But leave him alone, because the test is undergoing right now, and let's hope he won't cause problems later. One of the guards suggested killing me, since they had received the money. After all, I was a no nobody and not even a descendant of an awakened. So if they killed me, they would justify themselves by saying that I had turned into a mutant. Stay down. Maybe we will give you a chance of survival, one of the guards told me. Wasn't this three years ago? Before the disaster? Had I reincarnated back to the day of the talent test? I thought inwardly, recalling that the reason I wasn't tested was that someone had tampered with it. Enough talk. Just kill the brat, said one of the guards, before he could act. I reached for the plasma weapon, and this time I wouldn't let history repeat itself. The guard was startled by my swift movement, which shocked both of them. As I snatched the gun while I charged forward with determination and no fear in my eyes, I bodied one of the guards, causing him to lose balance, and swiftly landed an elbow attack to the guard's stomach. This stunned the other guard. Unable to comprehend my actions, the guard lost his breath, shock visible in his eyes, and swiftly pointed the weapon towards the other guard, who was now terrified, and knew he had no chance of winning against me. Having dealt with the two guards swiftly, who were now on the ground fully unconscious, I recalled that, in my previous life, I missed the test, and survived by scavenging and wandering for three years before I was discovered by the military, who found that I had a god-tier talent. But then, it was too late for humanity, as the Hauxia war zone had fallen, and there were no resources for proper growth. I managed to reach the Third Order, and in just seven months of nurturing, I wasn't among the strongest, yet I charged headfirst towards a Fourth Order mutant. Mother, my dear little sister Xi'an, I'm really sorry I wasn't able to save you, but there is still time to change the future, still time to rewrite history itself. As long as I pass the test and become the strongest, I can save the people most important to me, and end the apocalypse. Anyone brave enough to be in my way would be crushed without a second thought. Apocalypse Sword, God System is now bound. Dear host, your new mission is to touch the crystal within 30 minutes to unlock and activate system functions. Failure will result in the system disappearing. Mission Hint, if you succeed in completing the mission, all the skills possessed by the host will be enhanced a hundredfold and transformed into forbidden sword techniques. Seeing the system before me surprised me, because this system was different from the one in my previous life and different from any Awakened ever possessed. Could this be my golden opportunity? It seems that after reincarnation, even something has changed. As long as it makes me stronger, I must hurry and test who is behind this new system. Countdown begins, dear host. This caught me off guard, and I stared at the system panel when the guards noticed my presence and swiftly surrounded me. I realized that the leader was a low rank awakened, and my best advantage was to take the leader hostage. Firing the weapon towards the leader caught the guards off guard. The leader was disarmed and off balance. It was my chance. I swiftly subdued him, and was behind him in a flash, which surprised the awakened. If you move, we will be having an unboxing of this fucker's head. Trust me, I have an old friend known as Bob the Necromancer. Flashback. Good day, I'm Bob the Necromancer, and today we're doing an unboxing. End of flashback. I told the guards to take me to the test area, which they looked at me as if I had lost my mind. The leader shouted to me that a filthy ordinary person like me couldn't take the test. After pulling off the safety, the leader saw I was dead serious and told him to move, or I would begin the unboxing. I told him, Kid, this is a dangerous game you're playing here, answered the leader, trying to calm the tension. Meanwhile, the test area was filled with an audience to the brim, as it was like a briefing to learn and teach them how the apocalypse had begun. This was one of the most important things for humanity and individuals, which was the day of the test. The announcer said that the test would begin with the descendants of Awakened. The descendants of the Awakened appeared, lining up with pride on their faces. The guards received a transmission that an infected had escaped, taking a team leader hostage and entered the testing area. The news of me having a team leader hostage as an infected shocked the audience. The guards standing at the entrance of the testing area realized something was behind them, but before they could do anything, I dealt with them swiftly and threw them away, which made the other guards alert and surround me. The announcer, seeing me, a so-called person with no bloodline of Awakeners, told me to drop my weapon and surrender. If I didn't comply with his words, 
The guards had permission to rain bullets on me with no mercy. The guards were alert as they aimed their weapons at me, their fingers close to the trigger, ready to fire. Maintaining my calm, I replied to the announcer that I wasn't infected. The soldier, seeing my movement, was alert, his aim steady on my head, his breath controlled, waiting for orders. Nor do I want to interfere with the awakening ceremony, I said seriously, telling the announcer that I was only there to undertake the test. The announcer, pissed with my words that a commoner wanted to take the test, shouted to the guards to seize me. The guards charged in a battle stance as they quickly approached me. Seeing this, I let go of the weapon in my hand, knowing that under the safe zone regulations, Awakeners are accorded special rights, and violating military orders is a grave offense. But with significant contributions, one can cancel out such offenses. The team leader, who had been taken hostage, realized I was unarmed, and turned to me with rage, <laughs> punching me and calling me a useless infected. The punch was really heavy causing me to fall way back on the ground. Having been pinned down as another guard was ready to deal a killing blow to me, the announcer shouted that they should execute me. The guard with the sword was ready to slice my head. When a huge chopper came and shone a light on me, the guards wondered why the supersonic jet was there. When the jet's cabin opened slowly, all the people paid attention to it. A huge guy jumped from the jet, wielding a blade. Someone seemed to be a huge fan. He landed with great force, dispersing a cloud of dust and wind. The guards, sensing the great pressure, wondered why the Grand Marshal had come to the testing area. The Grand Marshal told the guards to let me go, since the military zone was in need of high-level awakened individuals. Seeing my determination to bet my life on awakening, he allowed me to proceed and told them that if I failed to awaken, they should not hesitate to execute me. Telling them to arrange the test was according to my expectations. The Grand Marshal told everyone to disperse from me, giving me room to be on my feet. The descendants of awakeners said that a commoner thinking he could awaken was preposterous, and one added that I might puke being close to the rotten flesh of a commoner. Approaching the awakening pillar, seeing it close, I recalled how in my past life, I was manipulated and wasn't able to take the test. Reaching out my hand, I vowed that I would correct all my mistakes and rectify all my bad choices. This time, I would take everything into my own hands and shape and control my own destiny. The reaction when I touched the awakening stone was so strong that it even shocked the Grand Marshal and had the announcer sweating. The audience couldn't believe their eyes that a commoner was truly awakening. The familiar sensation of spiritual energy infusion made me want to give it a try. The Grand Marshal saw the current test rise from D rank to C rank and leap into B rank. This shocked the announcer to the core, thinking if I had a higher level talent, the current level could reach A rank. I felt spiritual energy filling my organs, but still felt hunger for more, which I infused with more spiritual energy. By doing so, I caused a huge commotion. The announcer was so shocked that a mere commoner like me could have a rank level talent, and the odds of this were 1 in 10 million to achieve it. He was terrified to think that he almost ordered my execution. The Grand Marshal realized that the final test wasn't shown, and began to wonder if my talent could go even higher. The supersonic psychic jets were pushed by my spiritual power, and yet, my power was still surging higher and higher. Still not satisfied with the spiritual power I infused, even more, and the audience were terrified by what they saw ahead of them. I looked like a war god, filled with spiritual power, yet hungry for more. The spiritual power shot through the sky, almost knocking the, the supersonic jets to the ground. The AI shouted that the test was currently on S rank, and still no signs of stopping. This horrified the audience, who were ins arrogant and felt superior than me, seeing I was a dragon hidden among sheeps. The Grand Marshal, seeing that there was a no signs of the testing to end, shocked him to the core which he was scared that I had turned to be an s rank talent, which is a potential third order, and which seem as heaven fate, cause the safe zone needed someone like me. Seeing my spiritual power, my attract mutant grand marshal declared for deployment of guards to defend and prevent mutant attacks. The announcer announced what he was told, telling the guards to block all routes to prevent any accident from happening, and said to even seal the upper space. Still in hunger, I charged more spiritual energy. Like the more I infused, the hungrier I got. The force spiritual energy caused the jet to be unstable. The whole area was facing waves of spiritual energy never seen before for a long time, but the test came to an end. This made the audience look at me with horror, knowing I was truly a dragon in among sheeps. Even the guards who had attacked me were terrified. What they saw, the entire testing area went in silence. When the computer was about to release my test level, which caused the Grand Marshal to drop his tablet, and shocked, unable to believe what the tablet had showed him about my level, it had shown him that I was truly a pure blood double S rank level this terrified him, cause he knew that an S rank had a potential to become a third order, but a double pure blood S rank was a sure to become a third order, and knew that the whole Tin Feng region was going to undergo sweeping change. One of the descendants could believe that our protagonist was being praised by the Grand Marshal, and another said that truly people change, because a minute ago, they said he was a disgusting being, now they praise him. Another warned them to be careful with their words, because I may be their superior in the future. I was sure that my double S talent was the highest in humanity, but I was still disappointed by how weak its limit was at the S level, because I was still hungry for spiritual energy and knew I could push to get a triple S talent. I knew the influence of a double S talent wasn't enough, and what matters now is to complete the mission of the Sword God system. 